Hello viewers, I'm Simon Preston and this is Reggae Boys Commentary. It's the preview for Jamaica vs Venezuela, the first match for both teams in the Copa America Centenario, which begins tomorrow, this Sunday, at Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. Group C action. A win for Jamaica helps them to go one step closer to the quarterfinals of the tournament. What a fantastic feat that would be for the Reggae Boys. So here goes the preview. Venezuela, they're also known as Los Yanineros, and they are ranked 77th in the world. And what that means is that they are ninth out of the 10 teams in the CONMEBOL region. While Jamaica, we are fourth in CONCACAF and ranked 46th in the world. Some key players to look out on the Venezuela side of things. They have Salomon Rondon, who plays for West Bromwich Albion in the Premier League. He is six feet one inch tall and he a, has a physically imposing presence. And he holds the ball well and for his teammates to run into space. Now, he, this will be his 50th match for Venezuela well, as he plays against Jamaica. So he'll be want, looking to make a good impression on this occasion. He averages one goal every three games for his country. So that is something to keep an eye out for on Rondon. If you look at Venezuela's recent form, looking at the start of the year 2016, it's not really been the best of form. They've only won one match since the start of the new year, and that came in their first match of the year, which was in February, when they beat Costa Rica one goal to nil. After that, it, in the World Cup qualifiers, they didn't have such a good form. They drew 2-2 to Peru in Lima. You could say it was a decent point away from home. Smart football on that day. However, the results from there just got worse and worse. Where they lost 4-1 to Chile at home. They lost 2-1 to Costa Rica. And they had a string of draws as well. For example, they drew 0-0 to Panama. They drew 1-1 to Guatemala as well. And they drew 1-1 with Galicia. So... It has not been the best of form for them and goals has been hard to come by because if you look at those six matches, they've only scored six goals. So they've only been averaging one goal game, but they've been conceded more than that. So it is a threat for them. So finding the back of the net has been a challenge for them. If you look at recent history between both teams, We've met on a number of occasions. We drew once in 1997, 0-0. We lost to Venezuela 2-0 in 2003. On Marlon King's debut in 2004, we beat them 2-1 at the National Stadium. In 2011, after winning the 2010 Caribbean Cup, we lost 2-0 to them at the Montego Bay Sports Complex. And the most recent match we had with them was in 2015, when we beat them 2-1 on Giles Barnes' debut when he scored as well beating them 2-1 on that occasion at the Montego Bay Sports Complex. So two wins, two draws, and two wins, two losses, and one draw that we have against Venezuela on this occasion. Another player to keep an eye out for Venezuela is Thomas Rincon. He is a 28-year-old central midfielder who plays with Genoa in Serie A, Serie a in, in Italy. He is a hard-tackling football player, and he covers a lot of ground in tracking back and moving forward with his teammates. So, a very tenacious sort of player, you could say. And he has some accolades under his belt as well, as he was the best player in the Copa America in 2011. So, he has some pedigree in these sorts of tournament. But can he replicate that on U.S. soil? Well, only time will tell if that will be replicated. And goalkeeper Danny Hernandez, a six foot five inch goalkeeper, he is another one to keep an eye on as well. He plays for Tenerife in the Segunda División in, in Spain, the league that is just under La Liga. He has good shot-stopping ability, and in his 21 matches that he's played for Venezuela, he's kept nine clean sheets. So you could say he keeps a clean sheet every other game, almost. So Jamaica is going to have to make sure they get the ball past him consistently for us to, to win this game. On the Jamaican side of things, a player that has improved leaps and bounds at the international level and has shined on a number of occasions playing for Jamaica is none other than Adrian Mariapa. 
our skipper. Since the start of the new year, Adrian Mariapa has led things for Jamaica in terms of aerial duels won and shots blocked. 12 aerial duels won, and let's not forget, you know, Mariapa is 5 feet 10 inches tall. He's not the tallest of players. And you know, look at the two goals that he scored in the Premier League, one with Reading and one with Crystal Palace. The first goal that he scored in the Premier League when he was at Reading, he jumped over Ryan Shawcross, who is 6 foot 5, and scored a goal. The second goal he scored, scored <clears throat> for Crystal Palace in his first season with them. He jumped over Norwegian centre half Brett Hangeland, who is six foot six. Adrian Mariapa is dangerous with those aerial duels, whether defensively or offensively, and he is a threat to the opposition, and he is a key asset for the Jamaican team. Shots blocked, he has ten shots blocked. He's always making sure he puts himself in the right areas, and I like his position in knowing self as a centre half. He is not going to drift wide out of position unless it is truly necessary so he is not a stubborn sort of player he will remain compact his quick feet as well and he will give 9 out of 10 performances for Jamaica on a regular basis he's closing in on 40 caps as well as remember he made his debut for Jamaica in 2012 so four years ago he made his debut for Jamaica wow it's amazing how time flies I tell you so for Jamaica to advance to the quarterfinals of this competition, victory is the only thing that is necessary. Anything less, we're going to put make things difficult for ourselves. Not that we can't beat Uruguay and Mexico, but opening with a win in the first game of a tournament builds momentum and confidence as the team heads off to California for their next two matches, where they'll play as well in Santa Clara and also another area in California as well with Uruguay and Mexico. A lot of experts has been saying only United States and Mexico will be the only conquer of teams to get through the group. Well, we saw what happened to the United States yesterday and they have an uphill task to complete. But looking at Jamaica, we can be that conquer of team that goes the farthest in this competition. We have that sort of ability and we do believe that we can do that. So let me know in your comments below about all of this sorts of information and also, don't forget to subscribe as well. What are your thoughts about the prediction for this match? Do you think that Jamaica will get the victory? Do you think 2-1, 3-1, 1-nil? Are we going to scrape it? Will it be a last-minute goal like we saw Rudolf Austin against Canada in the Gold Cup last year? Will it be a set-piece goal, a headed goal? Will Michael Hector score his first goal for Jamaica? Will Clayton Donaldson score his third goal for Jamaica? Let me know. It will. Who will keep between the sticks for Jamaica? Do you think it will be... Andre Blake? Will it be Ryan Thompson? Will it be Dwayne Carr? Let me know in the comments below about your thoughts about this and how far you think Jamaica will go in this tournament as well. I'm Simon Preston. This is Reggae Boys Commentary. And don't forget as well to subscribe. And I will also do tomorrow after the game as well a review of the match. So stay tuned for more content. I'm Simon Preston, signing out.